So today we shall deal with the topic plasmids. This is one important term which a student would have to be very thorough throughout dealing with biotechnology. So especially for the beginners uh, and those students who have opted for biotechnology in 11th and 12th. So it's very necessary that you get the definition, get the uh, meaning of plasmid very correctly. So what are plasmids? They are not, nothing but DNA molecules. The DNA molecules. So, uh, why why they have been uh, used in biotechnology so much? They are DNA molecules, but they are not the main. They are not the DNA in the main genome of an organism. Plasmids are found in many bacteria and yeast, but other than the main genome, which gives all necessary features for the bacteria to exist, there is some thing extra extra genetic material in a bacterial cell so this extra genetic material other than the main genome is referred to as plasmids because they have genes not necessary for the growth or existence of bacteria but which gives it a very specific feature which uh, another bacteria of the same species may not have which makes this this genes on the plasmids make each bacteria a different strain. They are called strains. Clear? Yeah. So, what is plasmid? A definition. Uh, I have written it separately. You can define it together just to understand the meaning. They are extra chromosomal. Extra. Why extra? Other than the main genome. So, they are extra chromosomal material. Self-replicating because they have their own origin of replication. Uh, so, they need not depend on the main genome for replication. DNA should make its own copies, no, it should replicate. So, it has, plasmid has the feature of self-replication. They are usually circular. They are generally circular, double-stranded. Two strands you can see, double-stranded. Uh, and it is helical, of course, but for convenience, we draw simple. Uh, okay, they are helical, just like DNA helix, they are. Uh, with the same basis, A, T, G, C, uh, double stranded and naturally found in many bacteria and yeast. So this is the definition of plasmids and each term in it is important. It is extra chromosomal that is not in the main genome. It is self-replicating. It does not depend on the main genome for its replication. That is one main reason why we use it in cloning. Usually circular, double stranded and naturally found in A in bacteria and yeast. So that is the definition. So uh, as I already said the genes in them give each bacteria a specific trait. So suppose for example I take um, see there can be genes which allow the bacteria to resist certain harsh environment or extreme temperatures can uh, survive in some strain can survive some bacterial strain can survive in very hot temperature uh, whereas other other bacteria of the same species may not. Some bacteria of a species can be resistant to an antibiotic. Matlab, if that uh, bacteria is cultured in a plate uh, with media containing certain antibiotic, it will not die. That is the meaning of resistance. It resists antibiotic. Uh, whereas another strain of the same species may not resist it. Antibiotic can kill them. So that is because there are genes which make them resist a particular uh, thing uh, in the environment. So, I give you an example of uh, bacteria with the genetic uh, material that is a plasmid called fertility factor. That means its plasmid contains gene which codes for a protein uh, making it fertile that is making it produce a structure called sex pili. It produces a structure called sex pili. That is because of a gene called fertility gene. So, this plasmid is called fertility plasmid. So, this is one strain called F plus strain because it can produce sex pili. And the, there are other strains of the same bacteria which does not produce the sex pili because they don't have that plasmid. They don't have plasmid at all. They don't have the F uh, fertility gene or fertility plasmid. So, they don't produce 
sex pili now uh, naturally through a natural process this f plus strain can give its f plus gene that is plasmid to the f minus strain the f plus strain here is called the donor and the f minus strain is called the recipient what happens how does the bacteria multiply normally it produces by asexual reproduction na right? binary fission multiple fission etc but during certain unavoidable uh, sorry unfavorable conditions like extreme heat or uh, no, non non availability of you know right uh, environment uh, etc they may these strains f plus strains may still carry reproduction sexually this is a kind of sexual reproduction where the f plus strain starts using its sex pili and conjugate with bacteria not having the sex pilus not having the f plus gene so such two bacteria when they come together see here the sex pili penetrates into the wall of the f minus strain so f plus and f minus strain they are conjugating so first step is pairing second step after pairing second step is transferring the f uh, f plus plasmid to f minus strain how the double stranded plasmid it will cut in such a way that only one strand of it will pass through the tube conjugation tube and it will enter the f minus strain so where each of the uh, cells that is the donor cell as well as the recipient cell is having only one plasmid now and it will replicate and become double stranded it will replicate and become double stranded in both the cases so only one single strand passes on so now what has happened here only the single strand passes then replication occur in both and the f minus strain is transformed to f plus the population of f plus the population of f plus increases how they have converted the f minus strain like their own so f minus strain has changed to f plus matlab f plus population is increasing so such two strains like f minus and f f plus and f minus naturally when mixed together all the cells become f plus so this is also known as an indirect method of reproduction similarly there are many strains of different species of bacteria like uh, later somewhere we will learn about griffith's experiment where he had used a virulent strain s strain called virulent and r strain called non virulent virulent meaning disease causing non virulent means uh, it cannot cause the disease so such two strains were mixed in a culture plate and when the s strain cells were destroyed by heat see the cell wall is broken the cells are not there but dna doesn't degrade dna can it will degrade at high temperature but it can again uh, you know become intact okay it, it denatures and again it gets back its nature so such dna which uh, who cells have been destroyed when cultured with live r cells the dna can enter into the r cell so r cell was non virulent it would not cause disease but because s strain uh, the gene from s strain plasmid from s strain enters the r strain becomes s strain it becomes virulent so such things happen uh, naturally and we have tried as by bio, uh, the biotechnologists have tried to modify plasmids to even artificially deliver a piece of desirable dna into organisms just like bacteria having gene for antibiotic resistance so naturally plasmids have this nature of uh, you know giving a piece of its dna or the whole plasmid into another uh, cell so uh, even artificially they have been used to uh, uh, give certain traits to an organism even the bacteria that have gene for resisting antibiotics uh, like for example if, uh, if if you call if you take the example of typhoid causing bacteria salmonella typhi murium uh, it has got uh, gene resisting the antibiotic tetracycline that means if you culture them in a plate with media and add tetracycline in it they will not die they will survive 
whereas e coli cells naturally cannot resist the tetracycline they will die in tetracycline containing media so you can you we have methods of our, this was the first work done by boyer and cohen which we will discuss in the next video how the gene coding for tetracycline was cleaved using restriction enzyme and it was joined the plasmid was isolated and it was joined with the plasmid and given back to e coli so you can so to understand all those steps of how uh, the recombinant technology is done we will discuss each steps in detail in the next video that means you have you have to isolate the tetracycline gene you have to transfer it in e coli by isolating its plasmid redesign it by this new uh, piece of dna having gene for tetracycline then incorporate it in e coli culture e coli in the media containing tetracycline and you will see that it doesn't die it will survive that means e coli gets resistance so with all these things in detail what are those tools needed and all we will go further uh, in the next video artificially redesigned plasmids uh, artificially redesigned plasmids are being uh, have been made technologists have redesigned plasmids this natural plasmid may not be so efficient so to make it more efficient to be used as vectors in uh, microbes or plants or even animals they have redesigned it with various segments altered and joined so that they would be very easily carrying the gene of interest and acting as a vehicle as a vector so we will talk about vectors in the next video thank you have a just have a snapshot of this uh, whole thing yeah so take a snapshot and go through it thank you